Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Andy Max. This is episode 5, I think. Um, in the last episode, I said I was going to be working on a robot arm. Um, but um, yeah, my 3D printer uh, is not quite working, so I'm literally um, working on it right now as I film this. Um, so what we are going to do instead is we're going to be, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that um, we're going to be doing some homebrew. Um, so this video is going to be part one of homebrewing. Um, I have no idea how many parts it's going to be. Um, I think it takes about 15 to 22 days to get the homebrew going. Um, so hopefully by the time we've got um, the homebrew um, yeah, sort of ready to go, um, whatever the process is, um, we'll jump back onto um, yeah, the robot arm. So yeah, welcome to another episode. So good to have you here. So just a quick little tidy up. Um, yeah, the printer's got to wait. got a bottle brush, we've got a nice little green one, Here we've got a ladle, cold water cleaner detergent um, to get rid of any dirt and then we've got our sterilizer to get rid of any um, bacteria. We have our carbonation drop, so a uh, real, um, real quick read is that these go into the bottle and then you pour the beer in and then that creates um, the carbonation. For seven we've got sediment reducer which is this little who decky here so I'm guessing that goes in and then the pipe the tap goes over it and it stops stuff coming through into the bottle and we've got a hydrometer um, we will guess we'll figure out how that works um, a thermometer so this little tape gets taped onto the side beer findings so this is um, helps to clear the beer um, so I'm not sure if that means it's cloudy and it gets cleared, or if clear means something else. Um, so beer enhancer, which is this big bag here. Um, so instead of sugar, we use that. Um, it's a blend actually of dextrose sugars and malts. Um, number thirteen, we've got our uh, rubber grommet, which is this, and our airlock. Um, and so you. Yeah, um, you allow CO2 to escape without letting nasty bugs in. Okay, um, so looking um, at our instructions, um, the first thing we want to do is we want to assemble um, the fermenter. Okay, um, so with assembling the fermenter, the first thing we want to do is we want to unscrew um, the tap plug. Um, it says to use a uh, flat screwdriver or similar. Um, I've went for the or similar version. Um, it's not working. Probably me. <laughs> okay, so uh, so my um, my attempt to use a knife is not quite working. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, our next step is to screw the tap into the fermenter. Yeah, so we're gonna screw this um, into the bottom, and um, we then got to test it with some water. So we're gonna make sure that um, there's no leaks or anything. Um, and I guess that's gonna be super important to make sure that all the beer stays in there and nothing gets in it after we've cleaned it. Okay, um, so we just filled it with water, um, there's no leak, so it's pretty good. Okay, so now I need to fit um, the sediment reducer to the inside of the fermenter to make sure um, to make sure that the, f um, the opening facing is facing upwards. So one of the tricky things is this all words. Um, oh, okay, so there's an opening um, on this. So I guess I've got to make sure that's facing upwards when I put it in. Um, yeah. Sediment reducer I'm going inside. Okay, so I put it in, but... Okay, so um, we're at the first step and um, the instructions are not clear enough um, 
for me to figure this out. Um, yeah, I'm just a little bit confused. It says to put the sediment reducer on the inside of the tap, on the inside of the fermenter, um, but the only place where it fits securely is on the outside of the tap. Um, anywhere else it fits, it's a real loose fit, um, and I'd expect that, yeah, something that, I don't know, it's meant, something that's meant to fit, um, yeah, would sort of fit securely. Um, so I'm going to have to do a Google, um, but we will get to that. Um, yeah, uh, that's my first fail. <laughs> okay, um, so I think we've I figured it out. Um, the Google images weren't that helpful, but ones to um, fit it. Um, yeah, there's one image. Show. Let's show you what I'm thinking. Um, so we've got our tap, and it's meant to go in there. Um, so the instructions are a little bit back to front. Um, on the guide, um, so just got to get that in there, and then we're ready to go. So, um, so sediment reduced a little bit, mangled, um, but that's that's the fit. Okay, so the next step is um, to get the thermometer strip onto. Um, the side of the fermenter, so we're just going to do that now. Doesn't say exactly where to put it, but um, I'm assuming, yeah, like sort of in the middle will give us a good indication. Okay, so the next step is to fit um, the rubber and the rubber grommet um, and the airlock um, half filled with water um, into the lid. Okay, so. Um, it doesn't quite say um, which way to plug it in, um, but I'm, I'm guessing that yeah, having the big rubber bit on the outside would keep um, yeah the lid cleaner, um, and yeah, seems to make sense. So put the rubber in there, goes through to the other side, and then we have our airlock. I filled with water and stick it in there. Awesome, so over there's um, the airlock half filled with water. Um, and yeah, pretty, um, I'm, I'm pretty mad. I don't think I'd ever be able to come up with something like this, but um, you can see, so from the bottom of the fermenter, um, you know, CO2 or carbon dioxide would escape and would travel through the water and head out. Um, and then going the other way, um, nothing can, can go back. Um, it's pretty impressive, um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, what else I learn um, on this journey. Okay, so that looks like the setup of our fermenter. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is um, we really need to clean everything that we're going to use really, really well. And um, one of the ideas, um, because it's a fermentation process, I'm not sure. Um, if you've seen, um, yeah, you, you would have had um, food that's been a little bit too long in your fridge and you would have noticed um, some of the bacteria that grows on it. Um, or, yeah, and so even those things that go sour, so if you've had tomato sauce or... Um, so basically fermentation is going to encourage the growth of bacteria. Um, in, the, in our case, we want good bacteria to grow. Um, so in this step, cleaning it up, um, we're going to get rid of all of that stuff that's maybe in here. Um, yeah, so let's do that now. Okay, um, so to do the cleaning, uh, we need to use five liters of water. Uh, we're going to use our mangrove jack um, cleaner detergent, and we're going to put um, our spoon into the to the fermenter as well. Um, we're going to give that a good shake up, a good wipe, a good wash. Um, and yeah, like I said, the importance of um, getting our um, fermenter clean is that we don't want any um, other stuff to be growing in there. Um, because we want this beer to turn out good, so um, yeah, we're gonna give it a good clean, and yeah, get <laughs> I'm so excited. This is um, this is I've been thinking about this probably for like ten years, uh, so to finally be able to do it and actually to realize how simple it can be. Um, I remember seeing similar kits um, on Trade Me about ten years ago, and um, yeah, to go into a shop and see. I mean, the price is pretty much the same that I saw, and yeah, this is I'm so excited. <laughs> 
So I need to fill uh, the fermenter with um, five liters of water. I'm going to use my juicing jug. Um, it's got a neat little markings on it. So five of these into the fermenter and we're going to start cleaning it up. So we added the um, Mangrotex detergent um, and they suggested to put the spoon in there and I guess just to keep it all clean. Um, don't want any contamination. I guess like, um, I guess, you know, like with anything that requires following um, precise instructions, you just have to do the best you can. And one of the things um, that I often get caught up in is, is doing the precise instructions. Um, it's about getting it right. And I think two videos ago I talked about um, not letting perfect get in the way of good. Um, so we are hoping for a good beer, um, it's our first go, we're not hoping for a perfect one. Um, I'm following the instructions to the best of my abilities and yeah, we just got to hope for the best. Um, I'm super excited, uh, it's literally been 10 years wanting to do this and I've said that before on this video but yeah. Um, so right now, um, I'm just going to wipe um, the surfaces and then we're going to give it a good rinse. We're gonna, we've got one more step after this, uh, we're going to sterilize and then we're going to get on to um, instruction number three which is making the beer. Um, so we're going to get that started soon. Mm -hmm. um, it says to um, use the same cloth every time, but I think um, to be safe, uh, I probably, yeah, I might i probably just get a new a new cloth every time, um, it just makes sense. And yeah, and because um, I don't ever really have a place to put this to keep it safe from bacteria, um, I just think that's the best idea I have at the moment. Um, so we're just wiping it down, cleaning it. Um, with a so yeah, another tricky thing is um, this is all clean, uh, but I have no way to put it down, um, just because I'm not sure <laughs> uh, if there's any bacteria or anything uh, lying around. Okay, so um, to do the sterilizing, we need to do um, another five liters of water, another sachet, and um, I think this time we've got to let it stand for um, about 10, 10 to 30 minutes. Um, I'll double check the instructions and make sure we're following them. Um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for watching this video. If you haven't already, um, and you do like uh, these types of videos, you do, um, or you just want to encourage me, um, please hit that subscribe button. So set the timer to five minutes, and we're going to wait five minutes before we soil the fermenter again. Um, to make sure that the sterile solution gets everywhere and yeah it's just the waiting game right now okay and so the third thing that we're going to get on to doing is um, actually making the beer um, so we've got we've got our fermenter set up um, we've just cleaned it and sterilized it um, and now we're gonna yeah we're gonna make the beer <laughs> we're finally there okay um, so the sterilization is nearly finished um, so I've been reading a bit on the back of my Lucky Goat Pale Ale. Um, it's one of the things, the first things we need to do. Um, so we've really cleaned and sterilized, we've removed the yeast sachet from the bottom. We've got it here. Um, and the next thing is that we need to stand the pouch in hot water for 15 minutes. And there goes the timer. We've got to stand it in the hot water for 15 minutes to soften the extract. Okay, so the 15 minute timer for the heating up of the pouch has gone off. Um, so we're going to empty up the um, sterilized fermenter and then follow the instructions for the rest of the brew pouch. <laughs> this is so freaking exciting. Um, so the pouch I've just let stand for 15 minutes. I've just got to empty the, the, the fermenter. Um, I've got to pour it in and then I think we're doing something like t 10 to 14 days. Um, uh, to wait for it to ferment and yeah we'll be bottling beer in two weeks I'm just, <laughs> I can't I can't describe how excited I am this is literally 10 years um, of me putting it off um, and it's come to this um, it's been a couple hours since I started this and we're already here actually no it's been one hour and we're here um, so pumped <laughs> Okay, so we need to um, stand the extract in hot water for 15 minutes. It didn't say boiling, so I'm just running hot water um, in our sink in the kitchen. Um, and we'll set the timer again to 15 minutes.
Okay, so just about to empty that. Um, we all sterilized. Uh, beer patch is going in super soon. Okay, um, so one of the things I realized is that um, probably for next time, um, so at, actually I can do it at this point, is that I'm going to sterilize um, just the top of our um, stove top there. That's right where I'm working. Um, and it makes it super simple and easy because um, I'm struggling to know where to put this, which is the lid of the fermenter. If I put it down anywhere else, um, we unsterilize it. So, um, yeah, let's let's figure that out. Clean it up. Okay. Yeah, so we've sterilized um, our spoon and because we've got now our sterilized surface, I can put it down there and not have to worry about it. Um, so we just empty it and we don't rinse. Um, and then I need to boil three liters of water um, after I've chucked the pouch in. Okay, so um, I've let it soften. Now, um, we need to open the pouch and pour it into the sterilized fermenter and then rinse any remains in there, uh, back in there, and then we're going to add boiling water according to quantities shown on the front, straighten up the pouch. Um, so we need three liters of boiling water and we're going to end up with a final volume of about 23 liters. It's wet, hands are slippery. Trusty scissors. I'm gonna cut all the way across. And um, and that, to be honest, is not what I was expecting. But it's warm. Um, cold filled brewery pouch. <laughs> It's literally, we're doing it, we're making beer. Okay, um, now we need to boil three liters of water. Um, we're just going to use our jug and we've got a neat little 1.5 liter mark there. So, um, yeah, we're going to do boil two jugs. I guess we mix it and then we fill it up to um, 23 liters. Um, and then the next job, I think, is to figure out how to keep it at the 20 degree temperature. It gets very cold here. Um, it's Yeah, it's winter in Auckland. Um, so, it'll be yeah, hopefully we can um, figure out a way um, to maintain that temperature. We're going to use um, warm water and then um, yeah, just try and get this boiled as quickly as can. Okay, um, so the second jug is boiling. Um, we've got the first one um, in there. Um, and next to add with the um, boiling water is our uh, dextrose, or this one's called, um, it's Brew Enhancer. So so we've just added um, the three liters of boiling water, we've added the brewing enhancer, and um, I think we've got to start stirring and adding the cold water to get up to 23 liters. Um, 23 liters, uh, we just... Honestly, <laughs> I'm just so excited. Um, yeah, 10, 10 years of wanting to do this and it's finally happening. It's finally happening. Okay, so um, at the moment we're hovering around 20 to 22 degrees. Um, that's where we want to stay and we might want to get it up a little bit more. I'm going to find um, some blankets. Maybe I can wrap around it. We've got our... Um, airlock situated on there um, and so that's going to keep bubbling away um, over the next few days um, fermentation um, I think has started um, and yeah <laughs> this, is, this is pretty exciting um, so the next step is to find a spot to put this um, 
and yeah the tricky thing is going to be regulating that temperature i know i've said it so many times um but it's sort of just hitting me now um yeah the amount of effort that's going to be put in to making sure that this um yeah stays at temp and um, we do have a fireplace in our house so um that might be a way to keep the lounge warm get it to a nice temp put some blankets around it um and there's going to be some fluctuation and i'm not sure how that's going to impact um yeah, it's going to impact the fermentation process, but uh, yeah, we're hoping for the best and it's our first go. So, um, and I'm pretty excited. We figured out um, some readings, or, yeah, and I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Yep, um, so this is our challenge. Um, so the house is currently 16 degrees, so, and the roof um, with the sun shining outside is currently 19. Um, we need to be above that uh, to get our fermenter in the right spot. So. Um, what that might what that might mean um, I've seen suggestions of getting a heat pad um, was on the pouch uh, I'm not sure how much that costs yet but maybe we can figure something out um, but yeah as always I'll keep you posted okay uh, so we've already done our first rookie mistake I had everything set up um, <laughs> did the video and I found that I forgot to add the yeast um, but it's actually pretty good because it's meant um, it's meant that um, we're at the right temperature now to add it. Um, so I probably wouldn't have been able to add it until now, but um, I was ready to put the fermenter um, in its spot. And yeah, <laughs> turns out I forgot to put the yeast in. So I'm doing that now um, and then give it a little stir and we'll hopefully kickstart the process for real this time. <laughs> So the um, fermentation process has started and I think overnight um, our house temperature has gone down to 11 degrees but when I woke up this morning um, I found that um, yeah the temperature was pretty stable. We dropped down to 18. Uh, okay um, so what I've done is uh, put a heat pack and just heat it up in the microwave um, and then yeah so I'm going to come check back in 10 minutes. Um, and hopefully we've got our temperature up to about 22 degrees um it's, there's, there's actually nothing to worry about the range we have is 18 to 25 ideally we're at 20 um but if i get it up to 22 um, and then i can wrap blankets around it i'm hoping that can insulate it or can help the fermentation process um yeah to sort of retain its heat because uh, that's one of the things i found out this morning that um yeah um that the fermenter was a little bit warmer than I thought it would be. Um, it was 10 or 12 degrees, uh, 10 to 12 degrees overnight um, here in Auckland. And um, yeah, so, so yeah, maybe I don't have to stress about um, maintaining the temp, but yeah, I'm gonna try stuff and hopefully learn some things on the way. Um, yeah, cause there's not, <laughs> there's not that actually that many instructions on how to do this. Um, they do suggest maybe getting a heat pad, but um, I'm not, yeah. Um, I think we've already gone over budget on this project, um, so yeah, I'll keep you posted.